short video, we're going to look at graphing lines and slope intercept form. So I'm going to talk about what slope intercept form is. And then we're going to look at four different examples on how we can graph lines and in slope intercept form. So let's start with just what slope intercept form is. It is y equals mx plus b. Y equals mx plus b. So what makes slope intercept form kind of unique is, well, you're going to have y by itself, and then you're going to be able to quickly look at the equation and figure out your slope and your y intercept. So the number that appears in front of your x value so your coefficient on the x, the number that appears in front of the x, that is your slope. That is your slope. Where the number, the constant, the number by itself, that is your y-intercept. That is your y-intercept. So we'll jump into the first example here in a second, but I do want to drive these points home. A y-intercept is where your line is going to cross this y-axis. So if we see like a 9 here, we know we're going to cross the y-axis up here at 9. If I saw a negative 3 here for my y-intercept, I know I'm going to cross down here at negative 3. So looking at that y-intercept gives you a pretty crucial piece of this graph. The other piece is the slope, and the slope is really going to drive how to create this whole line. The slope is going to be, again, that number in front of x. What's super crucial here is the slope you want to think rise over run rise over run so it's going to be a number that we want to represent as a fraction if possible the top number is going to tell you should we be going up or should we be going down up or down up or down the run the bottom number is how many you should be going to the right so rise up and down run how many you go to the right it can be very confusing here because when we plot points like x and y you always do the left and right, that's the x first, and then the y, which is up and down. So you go left and right, then up and down. Slope is different. We want to plot the rise, so going up or down first, then the run. So we talk about going up or down and then to the right. Plotting points, it's opposite there. So be very, very careful at this difference. We'll talk about this a lot in our problems. So here we go. We're going to plot some slopes and some y-intercept and make some lines here. I have y equals 2 over 3x minus 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down what my slope is, what my y-intercept is, and then we're going to look at how we can graph this by hand. So again, the slope is just the number that appears in front of the x, which in this case is 2 over 3. Notice my slope is not 2 over 3x. It's just 2 over 3. My y-intercept is this number in the back, this constant in the back. I see a minus 2. That is my y-intercept. Okay, So we have my slope. We have my y-intercept. And this came from slope-intercept form. Super easy to pull that information. How I'm going to graph this problem, though, is I'm going to first start with my y-intercept. And then I'm going to use my slope to get the rest of this line. So the y-intercept is at negative 2, which just means I know I cross this y-axis at negative 2. So if I go down on my y-axis to negative 2, I'm going to really put a point there at negative 2. That's the first thing I do is I always start with my y-intercept, get that down on my paper. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my slope. So remember, it is rise over run. So when I see a positive 2 and I'm thinking about, hey, am I going up or down? If I see a positive 2 up there, that means I'm going to go up 2. And then this 3 is the run part. It's always about going to the right. So I'm going to go up 2, right 3. So since this is positive, I'm going up 2. The bottom of 3 is always right 3. So my pattern that I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up 2, right 3, up 2, right 3. So I'm going to start at my y-intercept. There it is. Hi. And I'm going to go up 2, right 3. So with my pen, I'm going to count up 2, 1, 2, right 3, 1, 2, 3. Put a point. And then I'm going to go from there, up 2, 1, 2, right 3, 1, 2, 3. I can continue that pattern on, up 2, 1, 2, right 3, 1, 2, 3. And then I reach the end of my paper. Now, at this point in time, I have enough points on my paper that I can use like an ID or a straight edge, anything, and I could plot my line. 
if I wanted to get more points to the left here, there is a way of doing that. So if the pattern was up to right three, up to right three, up to right three, if I want to go in the opposite direction, just do the opposite of this pattern. Instead of going up to right three, the opposite here would be down to left three, down to left three, down to left three. Check that out. Now you'll notice these points still fully line up. So my pattern was up to right three, up to right three. But if I want to keep my pattern going, I can reverse it down to left three, down to left three. You'll notice all these points really, really line up. And that is what's going to make my line. So I'm going to use my ID. Try and line these points up as best as possible. And put some arrows on the end because this line is continuing forever in both directions. And that is graphing a line. I'm going to move a lot faster in my other three examples here, but that is the basics of graphing a line. We're going to look up some other instances and cases that we can run into with these. So here we go. Y equals negative one-fifth X plus three. So my slope, see it really fast. It's in front of that X. It's negative one over five. My Y intercept, I see that positive three. There's my positive three. So again, start with the Y intercept first. We need to cross the y-axis at positive three, so I go to my y-axis, positive three, and put that point. Second thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take care of my slope. I see a negative one, five. Remember, it's rise over run. So when we're positive, we're going up on our first step, but I see a negative. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in to go down one, but still keep going to the right. We're gonna go down one, right, five down one right five so from my y-intercept i can plot a whole bunch of points here down one right five one two three four five put a point down one right five put a point if i wanted to i can work backwards and come up with some more points but i'm gonna leave it as is there we go down one right five down one right five i got enough points there that that does make a line so i'm gonna line them up here Arrow here, arrow there, and that is my line. Notice I have some arrows on the end there. That's important. Two more examples. Y equals 3X minus 4. Y equals 3X minus 4. So I can quickly look at it. I see the slope is 3. And then I see the Y intercept is negative 4. The reason I put this example in here is this three often will freak people out. They're like, oh my goodness, every other problem we've done is a fraction. I now see just a three. There's a very easy way to change a whole number like this, this nice integer, and switch it to a fraction. If you like fractions, go ahead and just put it over one. That's going to help you with your rise over run bit. It's going to help you with your slope. So when you have played old numbers like three, that's the exact same as three, over one. So when I look at this, I see a positive three. Since it's positive, we're going up. We're talking up three and then right one. Up three, right one with my y-intercept at negative four. Start with that y-intercept. So there's the y-axis. Drop down to negative four. Put a point. And then we need to follow our slope. We're going up three, right one, up three, right one. Up, one, two, three, right, one. Up, three, one, two, three, right, one. Up, three, one, two, three, right, one. Up, three, one, two, three, oh, lost count there. There we go, right, one. So continue my pattern there. If I want to get the other points, just reverse that pattern. The opposite of up, three, right, one. Down, three, left, one. Down, three, left, one. But I got enough points there. Line them all up. And... There we have it, arrow, arrow, there's my line. Our final piece here that we need, our final piece, we have y equals negative two x. So when you look at this, we need to pull out the slope, we need to pull out the y-intercept. So slope, just that number in front, I see a negative two. It's not a fraction, so I'm gonna make it a fraction by just putting it over one, negative two over one. But then I get to that y-intercept and I look and there's nothing there. 
There's nothing there. How do we represent a whole bunch of nothing? It is zero. It is zero. So if I'm going to graph this equation, I'm going to start with my y-intercept. Start with my y-intercept. It's at zero. So on my y-axis, go to zero. Put our point. Second, I'm going to take care of that slope. I see negative two over ones. So remember, it's rise up and down, rise over run. So if I see negative two, we're going to go down two, right one, 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 down two, right one. We're going to take my ID, something straight, line them all up. Put some arrows through it. That was your refresher on graphing lines in slope intercept form. I know I sped up a little bit faster on these back ones, but you know, kind of once you see one or two examples, you usually get the hang of it. If you need to replay the video to really understand what's going on, be my guest, stop it, pause it, whatever you need to do to learn how to do graphing lines in slope intercept form.